ok so now it's time to start all right welcome everyone now we are on. welcome on board everybody to Thank the you. fifth edition of aviation tourism and hospitality post covid 19 recovery webinar i'm so happy to have everyone of you on board today Thank you very much for following us on this journey from edition one, two, three, four, and now this edition five. All right, so now we're going to be kicking off right away. And I'm so glad to have my two key panelists in the house this afternoon. Permit me to first of all introduce to the house someone you met last week. She spoke to us while we were having the fourth edition of the Aviation Tourism Hospitality post recovery webinar and um, fortunately it was wonderful to have uh, her on board last week and um, definitely I want to believe that uh, this today she's going to be you know dishing out to us as she promised information about Africa and mines industry in Africa that she has for us today. So House, please permit me to welcome to the floor, Madam Edna Hogan, who is the president of the Tanzania Chamber of Commerce Highland. Madam Edna, kindly say hello to the house. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you so much for having yeah. me. And, and you tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, okay. So my name is Mrs. Edna Liatu Hogan, and I'm the CEO of the Tanzania Chamber of Commerce in Europe. So we talk for clients across Europe, of course, in Africa, and via our parent chamber, we have a presence in America as well. Our parent uh, chamber has an office in New York. So our job, we are kind of like the bridge that supports businesses on, on all sides. So for clients in Europe who wants to do business to trade in Africa, we do all the connection, we help them set up and everything. And vice versa as well, for businesses in Africa who are looking for markets in Europe and America, they want maybe to sell their produce or whatever it may be, we are the people who can do that happen for you very quickly mm -hmm. and very uh, efficiently. We work with governments right. and we work with companies big and Thank small you. as well. Thank you. Oh, okay? Hold on, hold on, Edna, hold on, Edna. I'm coming yeah. back for you. I'm coming back for you. There's a lot okay. of time today. We're Thank going to you. hear you how. But before we go ahead, I must also introduce our MICE expert for today, our university lecturer, who is going to educate us today on MICE and what MICE is all about, and especially is going to show us some virtual experiences that we're going to be having today. So, how's Welcome with me with a round of applause. You can actually use your emotion, your reactions button to give a round of applause to Mr. Jebot Jensen, managing director at uh, Event Architect based in Netherlands. And not only that, he's an expert and an authority on MICE. He has a book. He's going to talk about it to us about his book very shortly on the MICE book. This guy is MICE exemplified. He's been in the industry for 20 years, but let me give him the floor to introduce himself to the house. Mr. Jabbat, you have the floor now. Okay, and do you mean that I give the lecture today? No, 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 no. just introduce yourself. Okay, oh, just to introduce are. myself, okay. I, I, exactly, I'm coming back to you. Okay, thank you. Um, I think I want to introduce myself a little bit more when I start my presentation, okay. but uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Kevo Janssen and I'm coming from the Netherlands and what I told you, I will introduce later. Otherwise, I do a double. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. So, without wasting any more time, participants are going to get to join us very soon. Now, today, before I give the floor to Madam Hedna to come up and tell us everything she has to tell us about our chamber, the mice industry, COVID nineteen. Before you guys join us, myself and Mr. Edna and Gerbert were just talking about the fact that we, ne we never saw ITB Berlin cancelled. ITB Berlin was the first mines event that was cancelled, first international mines event that was cancelled that brought to the whole world the reality. 
the COVID-19 has brought. And uh, after ITB Berlin, so many other mines even internationally and domestically were canceled. Actually, today I have someone in the house who's just joining right now, a local mice authority and expert. I'm going to be introducing him now. Okay. He actually is supposed to be holding the third edition of the National Tourism Transport Summit in Abuja, the capital of Nigeria, the summit that is actually for West Africa. But all these events were canceled this year because of COVID-19. But UNWTO in its efforts to help industries recover, especially with their focus on Africa, has come up recently this week with a survey statistics saying that mice will not be the last industry to recover. They are already looking at the fact that business mice, okay, might actually come up sooner than we expect. So that is the reason why on board the aviation tourism and hospitality post COVID-19 recovery webinar, we've had made this session specifically to focus on the future of mice in Africa. Mice is actually a very young and growing industry in Africa. Just last year, Ghana celebrated 400th anniversary of the year of return that the first slaves, ancestral slaves, enslaved Africans that they went on slavery. And Ghana attracted so many international visitors and the mines industry in Ghana was booming already and then COVID-19 struck. And now we are witness on that. So that is why today, mines for us in Africa is a very important topic. It's a very critical topic. It's a sector of the industry that we cannot overlook in the recovery plans, both at the UNWTO level, both at country levels, both at private stakeholder level. That's why I've put together today an, a panel of experts. Okay, apart from Gerbert and Edna in the house, permit me to also quickly introduce to you one of our own local mice organizer here in Nigeria and Africa. And this person, uh, I want to mention his name, is not only also a mice expert, he is the president of the Institute of tourism professionals in Nigeria. So as permit me to bring on board the panel, Chief Abiodu Odusawu. Chief, thank you very much for joining us. Please quickly say hello to the panelists and the audience. Are you there? Hello. Hello. How are you? Very good afternoon to you. I'm very glad to be on this panel. Hello, we can hear you. As, as good, after, speaking, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to you. Yes, I'm here as the introduced earlier by the, by the speaker. I'm here to as the panelist and to contribute to this debate. Thank you very much. And this is the afternoon for Dushawo, the national president of the Institute for Tourism Professionals of Nigeria, the convener of the National Tourism Panel Summit. Thank you very much, sir. We are so glad to have you. Probably you might want to get an headset or an hands free like mine so that we can have your audio quality better, sir. So we are looking forward to a very robust panel today. And um, if you can check your screen also, you'll find out that this particular webinar is being streamed live on our YouTube channel. So we're going to be expecting participants to join us as we go. So without wasting any more time, I'm going to leave the floor now to Madam Edna Ogan, the president of the Tanzanian Ch Chamber as a Plans for Africa, going into the future and what they are doing currently. She has something very important information to tell us that Africa needs to connect with. So Edna, you have the floor now. Thank you. So do you want me to talk about the chamber or about the topic to contribute? I want you to introduce yourself once again and talk about the chamber now. Mm -hmm. And I'll bring you on board after Mr. Jebert to talk about the topic of today. Okay. So as I said, my name is Mrs. Edna Yatu Hogan, and I'm based here in Dublin. I'm the CEO of the Tanzania Chamber of Commerce Europe. Uh, we are headquartered in Dublin. And we 
our job really mainly is to promote tourism, to attract investment, and also other sectors as well, uh, to look for markets for clients. We have clients across Europe, America, and Africa. We have a parent chamber that is based in uh, New York, the Island Chamber of Commerce. They are behind our establishment, and we received a lot of support from the government as well of Tanzania via its embassies. So our job really mainly is we are like the bridge, as I said. We uh, support businesses on all sides. For example, we have many clients in Europe that are very keen and interested to do business in Africa. As you guys know, Africa is a fast emerging economy. That's the place to be now. That's where the action is, is happening. China is so old news. So we are really promoting that because population-wise, when it comes to resources and everything, Africa has so much to offer. So our job is to really uh, move the traffic to Africa in terms of investment, in terms of tourism, when it comes to uh, what, you know, uh, sharing, skill sharing, tour, you know, um, uh, exposure tours and, you know, all that, we do all that. And that's why, for example, at the moment we have Swahili classes online. We, we receive so many requests. People are keen to learn the language. Even Prince William is learning the language. The reason is because that's what they are, that's what the honey is. People know there's something very beautiful about Africa. So everyone wants to go and do business trade, you know, you know, either way they feel like it's right. And that's why it's important when you know the language of the place, it makes it easier for you to trade and do business. So we are here to provide that, that just that. We work with businesses, small and large in all sectors and also governments. So if anyone, whether you're in Africa, you're looking for markets for your produce, you're looking for opportunities maybe to study, we can get to colleges, can do all that. So we, we do quite a big, uh, we have many, many projects that we do. And we have staff based in Dublin, in Tanzania for Africa and also in New York. So yeah, so we are here to, uh, to provide that. So if you are a company in Europe and you feel like you need a market which is close to 1 point something, 3 billion people, Africa is the place to be. If you want to sell, to trade, to invest, I would strongly encourage you to consider Africa. You know, no matter where, whether you want Nigeria, you want Tanzania, we can, we have all the top connection, we have all the infrastructure, we can make it happen for you. So I really, that's the reason why we're established here. And we are called Tanzania just from brand, branding point of view, but we work with all businesses across Africa. And in Europe, of course, as I said, we, work, we travel a lot. I, before Corona, I do extensively traveling across Europe, meeting our clients and trying to understand their needs and make sure we support them. So yeah, so that's really briefly about what we do, but uh, you can go to our website, www.tccireland.org. All the information is found there and the services we offer. All right, thank you very much, Madam Hedna. Yeah. So uh, we want to talk to us now more about your Swahili classes that is currently running. I want you to talk more about that because there are so many uh, Africans who don't know that um, you are offering a Swahili class online. So can you please actually, re emphasize if that? I may, if I may add something that we actually offer Swahili classes and English classes. So we okay. have teachers who are offering English classes to people who want to improve their English at all levels, beginners, intermediate, and advanced. And also we have Swahili classes for those who want to master a new language. By the way, can I just add, Swahili is such a beautiful poetic language. It's very easy to learn. And it's now spoken in Eastern, Central, and Southern African states. So it's one of the biggest languages in Africa. And it's so easy and it's beautiful. You know what, if you can see, if someone like Prince William is learning the language, actually is a big fan since his teens, there must be something beautiful about it. So I would urge everyone to join the class. It's very, it's very affordable. We, we, we were not doing it for money. We were just doing it because we, are, we, we love the language and we want people to know the language. And because I know it will help them a lot in terms of business, in terms of having a new language as well, which is it's fun, it's good. Post Corona, you go back to work, you start speaking in Swahili. I'm sure you'll make your friends jealousy. <laughs> Wonderful, that's very incredible. All so right, Eventbrite, so yeah. All the information <laughs> are found on Eventbrite, and you can share the link, please, if you may. After okay. the. Yeah. Oh, actually, once I transfer the microphone now to Mr. Gabbard, you can actually drop the link directly in the chat room so that participants can connect right away. So personally, I'm going to be enrolling for this Swahili class. I want to learn some Swahili, okay? Super. See you on Saturday. <laughs> See, you on Saturday. See you there. <laughs> See you there. All right. Yeah. So participants, 
that's Madam Hedner talking about our chamber, the Tanzanian Chamber of Commerce Island. And um, we were talking actually before you guys join us about having a MICE training for MICE expert. That information will be coming down later. Now, permit me to bring on board our instructor, our lecturer for today, okay? The person who I said to you is actually going to give us some virtual experiences today. So let me quickly tell you before I bring him on board that for participants that are joining this meeting, my instructor, Mr. Gabbard, has requested that we all connect to this webinar with our mobile phones so that we can be able to have a virtual experience. But I'm going to be leaving that to him to tell us more about what he wants us to do. So he will be teaching us and talking to us about what MICE is all about. The MICE industry is a little bit, you know, um, unknown to some people, especially top operators, DMCs, DMOs in Africa. Most of us are not really doing much, but the future of mine is looking more brighter, according to the UNWTO report. But let me leave all the talk, Mr. Gabbard Jansen, who is the managing director of Event Architects from Netherlands, live, and not only that, he is an author on the MICE book. Mr. Gabbard, now you have the floor. Hey, thank you. Uh, do you hear me? And please, can you confirm that the screen, that you see me on the screen now? Yes, we can oh, see you, Mr. Okay. Gabbard. Thank you. So, I start. The mice industry is rapidly emerging as one of the most important sectors. We heard before that Edna was saying. Not only within business travel, but also in the whole tourism industry, in recognition of its importance, conferences, centers, and congress halls are built around the world. Not only in the major cities, but more and more also in the secondary and tertiary cities and the resort areas. Before I start, I want to thank Captain Emmanuel Great for the invitation to speak to them. So my name is Cable Johnson, and uh, they told already I'm the owner of the event architects. I'm also a lecturer at the TU University, and I'm the author of the Rise book. And I'm also a father and a husband, a father of two children, and I am Dutch. So what I want I you to do, you. sorry? Welcome on board again. Thank you. What I want you to do is take your phone and go to www.menti.com and use the code 9196 and seven. And if you have questions during my presentation at the right corner in the bottom, you can send your questions. And at the end of the presentation, there's also space to ask some questions in the chat. So please go to your phone, go to www.menti.com and use the code 91967. So I told you where I am coming from, but I also want to know where you are coming from. So maybe you can fill in the form and say where you are coming from. Okay. There are coming more. Okay, majority from Nigeria. And I think there are Seems more. Seems we part. have more Nigerians in the house. Yeah, yeah, but I think there are more participants. Uh, till now, yeah, there's five Irish. Okay. I'll read a little bit. Okay, then I go to the next question to have an idea. Uh, what does mice means for you? And you have to fill in two words. Only try to say it in one word. What does mice means for you? Oh, 
Okay, networking, tourism, opportunities. I think a lot of this, these topics will pass in my presentation. Okay, networking, repeat business. Okay, that's nice, seven. There are already more people. <coughs> Okay, I think still one. It gives us a little bit an idea how we are thinking together about mice. Okay, for now I go further. Now you have also the feeling how it works a little bit. Okay, if we talk about mice. We don't talk about the Mickeys in the world of Walt Disney. No, we are talking about meetings, incentives, conferences, and exhibitions. And if we talk about conferences, that's the C, then uh, maybe we, we uh, talk also about conventions. And if we talk about E, that is sometimes also used for events. The question is whether this is a correct translation given the fact that festivals, public events, and sport events are not part of the mice industry. So, people who attend mice activities are mainly there for business purposes. So the first one is stimulation. It's important to get new ideas. The next one is strategic planning. Collective brainstorming for the future. Product update, finding about new products that are available. The next one, very important, education. You're never finished the education. Learning new skills and furthering their education. And the next one is networking. We saw it uh, in the sheet before. Meeting with others is important, among which colleagues, customers, and buyers. And selling and showing products to the future customers is also important. And rewarding, using an incentive trip as a rewarding or a loyalty program, it's also a very useful tool. So there are a few reasons to attend a MICE event. Then in most cases, participants or visitors of MICE activities will have to travel and stay one or more nights close to where the MICE activity will take place. This allows us to assume that this group falls within the domain of tourism. However, we hereby make a distinction in leisure and business tourism. Visitors and participants of MICE activities fall under the domain business tourism. These business tourists are connected to different sectors within the tourism and the hospitality industry by participating in the MICE activities. Then we can further subdive the business tourists. A separate group is the indiv individual business tourist who, for example, is on a client visit. These tourists often travel individually. The MICE tourist is also a business tourist, but because it is a part of an activity of MICE, it falls under a special group with its own characteristics. An important characteristic is that MICE activity is aimed at a large group of people who will be present for a short time. For the MICE tourists, the hospitality industry also plays a big and important role. When these people visit an activity, they will use many facilities such as transportation, food, drinks, entertainment, accommodation, shopping, and much, much more. So what are the key values of the MICE industry? The first one is a very important one. A visitor of participant in a MICE event spends more money than an average tourist. The spending level at a MICE event per person is three to five times higher than the spending of an average leisure tourist. The next one is a large scale. A MICE event attracts a larger number of visitors of our participants. Then, Large mice events often need a preparation time or a lead time of two to five years or even more. Reservations are made in a very early stage and this provides a stable basis for all the suppliers. 
Visitors or participants in a MICE event usually require the same type of service. So that makes it easy to work with that kind of groups. MICE events usually take place outside of the holiday season. During these periods, the occupancy rate in hotels are often low. This one is also very, very important, what we see, because visitors or participants of a MICE event will visit the destination for a short time and not long enough to get to know the place well. During the short stay, it is possible to leave a positive impression of the destination so that the visitor or participant will return home with a positive feeling. Once at home, the visitor or participant will spread the word about the destination and maybe even return on a family holiday. That's what I do more than once. The second one, or the, the following one, is uh, indifference to lack of tourism attractions. There is no need to have unique attractions at the destination. The mice visitor comes especially for the event itself and not for the zoo, not for the, 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 the leisure park. Then, within a city, there are often large locations that are built for a specific purpose. This kind of location can be very useful to host a MICE event. Think of, for example, a university or a sporting hall. And there are many different vendors needed for a MICE event. These suppliers can often be hired locally, and this will give the local economy a boost. So here you see a lot of key values, which make, and which make it clear how important the MICE industry can be. Then, MY stands for Meeting, Incentives, Conferences and Exhibitions. Recently, there has been an industry-driven initiative to not use the MICE market label and instead say the meeting industry, which encompasses all the above. The reasons for this discussion is because MICE has different meanings. MICE is, however, already widely used within the industry that will make it complicated for the change to take effect. Which term do you prefer? I think there can be more answers than only four. I don't know if everybody is logged out on the telephone, if you are logged in on www.menti.com and you use the code 91967, you can stay in and you can follow the presentation as well on your phone. You might also need to refresh the page, the menti.com page. Yeah, yeah, okay. I also want to refresh. Please. Okay, but there are coming, coming more answers. That's okay. All right, while that is going on, participants can begin to drop their questions in the chat room for Mr. Gilbert on the presentation. Yes. So we can take your questions. Okay. So, the next point. To be able to organize a MICE event, the government has a very important task. Of course, eventually the final goal is to brand a country or a city uh, as a unique location where a MICE event can perfectly be organized. And first of all, you see it at the left side, it's important that the country is politically stable. Many MICE events have a long lead time, so it is not desirable if political decisions are reversed, which will complicate the organizing of the event. Then the second one is the infrastructure. Is the location easily accessible for all the participants? Uh, once in the country, it's very important that there is an easy access. Are there sufficient hotels? Uh, are there good public facilities? So that's very important. Then the next one is safety. The safety is also an important issue. We are talking about two different types of security. The general safety of the country. And the second one is the, sec the security facilities around the MICE event. Then 
The next one is education. And we, know, we all know that it's very important to ha uh, have education. This can take many years, but it's important that all staff are well trained at all levels, both in operational and management functions. And finally, it is important that all stakeholders see the usefulness of all efforts made to grant a country or a city. For this, you need a lot of goodwill of all the parties involved. If all these conditions are met, then uh, the government can start with the branding. The great danger is that branding of a country or a city is implanted too early. And when the basis is not right, visitors will go home dissatisfied with negative experiences and negative reviews. So it's important that all the steps are taken by the government. Then the government has another task. When finally a MICE event can take place within a country or a city, the government can offer support in different areas. They can produce the MICE event, they can own the MICE event, they can sponsor the MICE event, and they can assist the sector with, for example, uh, grants or loans. They can assist the sector with supporting personnel like police or the army. They can assist with material, facilities, equipment. They can assist with marketing support for promotion. They can give moral support. They can give advice, but they can also uh, take care for easy entrance in the country with FISA. Now I want to tell something about the future of MICE. I think it's also important to look at the future. But before I start, I want to ask you, what do you think about the future of MICE? Will it change negative? Will it change positive? Or will it stay the same and it will not change? In the meantime, there was a question, and I will answer that question, and I think the answer was already there. What about visa entry requirements? Is this a factor as well? And I already told at the last point that uh, for the government, it's important to assist for an easy access for people from other countries. So visa is important, yes. We have a few answers and 78% is saying it will change positive and 22% uh, says it will change negative. So let's, uh, let's see. I go further. What will affect the mice industry in the future? When we look at the future of mice industry, we can determine a number of things that can affect the industry both positively or and negatively. First one, if you think of travel, travel is becoming easier <coughs> and more affordable, especially long distance travel is becoming more affordable. In this period of the Corona time, maybe not, but uh, it will be more affordable in the future. Then globalization, because of the world seems to be getting smaller, more and more international business will take place. And the government recognizes that business tourism is an important industry to focus on. The competition between destinations to host a large mice event is growing and more and more efforts are made to win this competition. Then in 2025, the world image will be very different. It is expected that India will be the country with the most inhabitants. And uh, I read yesterday an article that in 21, uh, your country will be the biggest. Then the next one is the, about the new generation. The new generation thinks differently and this requires other methods. They want to be part of an event and not just a spectator. They want to co-create the content. And then technical possibilities and safety are two points that I will explain 
uh, in the next sheet. We see the last few years, uh, a lot of things are happening. In a time with Corona and where uh, there are regular terror attacks, it is difficult to forecast what impact this will have on the long term for the mice industry. I want to ask you something about your opinion. And for this question, I want to look at the coming year and the next question about the coming 10 years. So maybe you can say if you are strongly disagree or strongly agree that the terror attack or a pandemic will have a major impact on the mice industry in the coming year. Please let me know. Go to www.menti.com and use the code again. So this question is for the short term, for the coming year. And the next question will be for the next year. Very fluctuating figures coming in. Okay, what we see is that for the coming year, the pandemic, the corona has a great impact in your opinion and a terror attack less. And now let's go to the next question and see if it changed for the next 10 years. So it's a 4.1 and a 6.4. And I'm going now to the next question. It's the same question, but for the coming 10 years. Please give your score. So that's interesting to see that most of us are thinking that for shorter the pandemic has a major impact on the mice industry. And for the long term, uh, we think that uh, the impact on the mice industry uh, will be more important for the terror attacks. And I think that's, that's normal that we are thinking that, but maybe let's see next year what happens because uh, we have to find something for the pandemic. Otherwise it has a very large impact. So I go further, if there are no answers anymore. I want to have a small talk about new concepts. So new concepts and technical possibilities make meetings taking place over a large distance a lot easier, like this one. It will therefore be increasingly important to prove the added value of face-to-face -face meetings. Lots of online events have been organized lately. These are often incorrectly referred to as virtual events. I would like to explain the difference between the virtual and the online events. First of all, it is important to know what online means. According to many sources, online means that a computer and the internet are used, like this event. So it's easy to draw the conclusion that both virtual events and online events fall into this category. The big difference is the word virtual. A virtual event takes place in a virtual world. What is the meaning of this? A virtual world is a computer-based online community environment that is designed and shared by individuals so that they can interact in a custom-built simulated world. Like maybe you know the game SimCity. Users interact with each other in this simulated world using text-based or two or three-dimensional graphical models called avatars. Sounds and text used by a computer to create a world where people can communicate with each other, play games with each other, and pretend to live another life. That means 
that you can see a virtual event as an experience in which you will get the feeling that you are part of the event. It gives many more possibilities to make the visitor more involved in the event. Existing buildings can even be virtually recreated. So moreover, it is also possible for the organizer to collect a lot of data behind the scenes. Details of all visits are available and such as the number of downloads, the number of visits or contacts and all useful information for the after sales. From the above, it can be concluded that a virtual event is a specific online event. It is not comparable with an online event like this one, Zoom, Skype, Teams, Meet, etc. These programs work very well online, but are not seen as virtual. And virtual events are a perfect alternative for conferences, trade fairs, meetings, workshops, and presentations. And I'd like to say something about video streaming. Within this context, I mentioned this too. This is like you are watching a movie on TV or Netflix. This is only going one direction and we can see this as one dimension. The next one is the online events. Here's some examples and I already explained how this works. Online events are going into two directions. As a participant, you can react and we also can see this as two dimensions. Then the virtual events, and you see it at the picture. This technique is perfect to use for trade fairs, conferences, meetings, and some variants. Because you have the feeling that you are really part of the event, you can make different choices like all other mm -hmm. participants. We can see this as there are three directions and also three dimensions. Imagine you are visiting a trade fair, a virtual trade fair. You are coming in, you choose your avatar. You make an avatar of yourself. You are walking in and you see all the other participants walking around and they are visiting some booth at the trade fair and they are all going their own way. And there is also place to interact. You can, you can interact with another person. You see them with a name uh, above the avatar. You can click on the name and then you can be connected and you can chat, you can video chat with the person. Imagine that is the third dimension that will be there. What are the benefits? Uh, you see here a lot of benefits and uh, some of them cost reduction. It is much cheaper to organize a virtual event than a real life event. There is a time reduction. It is very sustainable. And review is possible. There's a higher productivity. People win a lot of time and the venue is flexible. But I, I agree that a one-to-one -one live meeting is always the best because we are like animals and we want to, to feel and to smell each other. And uh, with online and virtual events, that's not possible. But it's a good alternative. Then virtual reality. The next step will be virtual reality. With, this, with special glasses, you come in a total virtual world in 360 degrees. If you are sitting in a special chair or walk on a special treadmill, you will get a real life feeling. The difference with the real world is almost gone. With virtual reality, you can create everything you want. Imagine if taste, smell, sound, visual, and feeling are true with the images you see. It's really like the real life. So, I have a next question for you. In what order would you like to attend events in the future? One is the most, and you can choose. Please make a ranking. And go again to www.menti.com and use the code 91967.
So live meetings is still on top. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, thank you. I go to the next question. And the next question is, do you think that there will be more online and virtual meetings in the future? It is an easy one. You only have to say yes, no, or you don't know. So 100% is thinking that there will be more online and virtual meetings in the future. So that's interesting. And we can see uh, what the future will bring if your thoughts are already saying this. So then there was a very important question. How can you be successful in Mars? And that is a very important question of this short course. The right answer is for everybody different. But if we look at some useful topics from today, I can give the following tips. First, be creative and original. Think different and think strategic. And be professional. This actually includes all the important skills that you need. Form a team. And we already saw it that the government is a very important key player, but there are more key players. All think at all the suppliers that you need. And embrace new techniques. And very important, know the trends and developments that are there in the industry. And gain knowledge. The reason why I wrote my book is also to give my knowledge to the next generation. So I want to show you a short movie about the book that I wrote. are interested in the book then you can go to www.therealmicebook.com and you can find all the information the book is uh, also available in the digital version and you can find all the information at the website so um, this is my presentation and i only have two slides to go so this is the slide where you can ask questions. And there's one question uh, that is open, I think. In the short term, post-COVID, uh, will we not see a drop in mice as companies rely on e-meetings via digital Uh Who asked this question? Because I do not understand the question. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Gabbard. Yes, I still have one question for you, for everybody. And okay, go ahead. Okay, yeah. go ahead. This is for this presentation. Please, can you fill in so I can make it better in future? Wow. Okay, participants, let's read Mr. Gabbard's presentation from his scale of zero to 100. You can refresh your browser at mighty.com. Use the code 91967. And be honest. Question. And be honest. You had it. Be honest. Please close that, Mr. Gabbard. Okay, there was one, one question still. Uh, the website from the book www.therealmicebook.com. Okay, let's see the ratings now. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. The ratings. Uh, uh, nice ratings. Very nice ratings, Mr. Gabbard. Thank you very much. Okay, and thank you. All right. Whoa. That was awesome. Coming from Mr. Gabbard. All right, everybody, can you join me and give a round of applause to Mr. Gabbard for that presentation? That was fantastic. That was fantastic. And I'm lucky to have my co panelist, my co moderator, actually. Okay, who is going to be joining us very soon? But you know, we were waiting for the remaining members of the panel before Mr. Gabba started the presentation. So I'm going to quickly inform you if you are not aware that DJ Bayeye is in the house right now, and also Madam Susan, the national president of Nanta. Can you guys say hello to us, DJ and Madam Susan? Hello. Hello, house. Hello, Africa. Hello, everyone. Thank you, DJ. You came late today. Hello. So, so sorry. I was on another one which started Hello, everybody. at 3 p.m. my time. Hi, Captain it's Emmanuel. Be, Hi, DJ. It's supposed to Welcome be for one hour, Susan. but it was from, um, from East Africa. Um, yeah, talking on tourism still in the region uh, post COVID 19. So it uh, went a bit over. That's why. Uh, yeah. But thank I'm happy you. to thank be you. here. Yeah. All right. Thank you for coming. And then, Madam Susan, it's nice to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. So you had Mr. Gaba's presentation. Participant, it's time to ask a question. Mr. Gabba, I have a question for you. You know, I told you earlier that in Africa, a lot of African store creators, probably travelers, probably industry participants, let me say that, industry players who actually don't know what mice is. I wasn't surprised when someone dropped the question in the house and said, what is the full meaning of mice? So when I dropped the response to that person, I asked the person to wait for you to finish your presentation, because I want you to answer that question. Mr. Gabba, what is the full meaning of my? Because there was nowhere in your presentation that you showed us okay. the full meaning. You, you want to know the, the full meaning of mice. And I think yes, uh, the full meaning of mice is all the business events, uh, the meetings, incentives, conferences, and exhibitions. That's a special kind of events. If you compare it to public events, that's a total different uh, piece of the market. Uh, so we are talking about meetings that are the business meetings, the short meetings that can be uh, organized very ad hoc, the incentives that are the group travels. Uh, a lot of companies uh, are organizing incentive trips to build up loyalty with clients or with customers or with uh, uh, personal. The conferences, uh, more days, uh, a lot of associations we have worldwide. And as you know, associations, they will organize uh, uh, every year uh, a, a big event where all the members can come. And especially the worldwide operating associations uh, are doing that. And they ask for the members to make a bid. And if you want to organize a big conference for an association, you are making a bid and you are offering a bid book to the, to the association and they will decide where they will hold the event. And then we have the exhibitions and you can see it as a trade fair as well. There are so many trade fairs. And if I can tell you that there are trade fairs where more than 20,000 people are coming, 25,000 people, imagine if you have 25,000 people in a city, how important that can be for the local businesses and for the local economy. So I hope that's an answer for you. Thank you very much, Mr. Gabbard, for that response. Now, looking at your presentation and um, the fact that the part that got me interested Ooh. is actually the part that you differentiated between online events and virtual events.
Mm -hmm. And you visit uh, the booth and you can, can click on a person what is, which is standing in the booth and you can communicate with the person in the booth from the company and they can give a presentation. They can talk to you. They can chat to you. They can uh, change business cards. So uh, you are really a part of what is happening over there. And at the same time, another visitor of that virtual event is, is visiting another booth. So everybody that is visiting uh, the virtual event has his own program. And at the event that we are now having online, we all have the same program. So that's a, a, a very big, big difference. All right. Thank you for that clarification. And um, for on that clarification, I created a poll for participants of this meeting. But before I launch the poll, I want to also quickly remind you that we have a MICE organizer in the house that I introduced to you guys earlier. And I'm going to bring him on board to come and weigh in on this discussion that is in the house, the meetings and all the post-COVID realities. He is the first person who is going to be giving us his thoughts on what the future of mice looks like in Africa. So, Chief Abiodo Odusan, please get ready. I'm going to launch a poll now on this issue of virtual and online events. The poll I'm launching is actually a question that Gebhard already asked us during his presentation, but I just want to be more specific, looking at the future. So this poll is a objective question. You just have to choose one option, and I'm going to be launching it now. I want everyone to participate. There are three options, and I want you to pick the most correct option that suits what you're thinking. Do you believe that the mines industry in Africa, make take note of that, in Africa, will be completely virtual post COVID 19? Number one, mines will be completely virtual. Yes, you agree. Number two, no, mines will remain physical or both. Only a few people in the participants have, have voted. Can we all vote? Let me relaunch the poll. I want us to actually vote again on that particular issue. I want us to be very clear. All right. The poll is canceling in 10 seconds. Okay, 71% believes that it will be both physical and virtual. 22 believe it should remain physical. Okay. All right, only 5% believes it to be completely virtual. 20% of us believes that mice will remain physical in the future, but 75% believes mice will become both physical and virtual post COVID-19. All right, I'm going to hand the poll. I'm going to share the result with you. Okay, this is the results of the poll. Can you all see the poll result on your screen? Yeah. Okay. So, Madam Head, you can see that there is still a 20% that believes that mines will be completely physical. 15 people, which represents 75%, believes it's going to be physical and virtual. And I am very, very interested in the results of this poll. So, Having launched this poll, I'm looking at the fact that 75% of us, a larger percentage, believes in the future our mice in Africa will be both physical and virtual. Let me bring in Chief Abiodo Odusawo to talk to us about number one, the National Tourism Transport Summit, which actually couldn't hold again this year. And then he's going to move on and tell us what does he think mice will be in the future for Africa? Chief Abiodu Oduso, you have the floor now, sir. Thank you very much. I hope I'm being heard very clearly. Yes, we can hear you now. The summit is called the National Tourism 
Transport Summit and Expo. It was actually background from the work of UNWTO and ICAO. I was trying to promote connectivity between aviation industry and the tourism industry. Like Gebert mentioned earlier, there is so much travel, traveling and link between aviation and the mice industry. Many people travel virtually by airlines to attend meetings, events, exhibitions, and conferences. And like he mentioned also, they actually have a higher level of disposable income than our normal tourists. Now, what we did there for was not looking to the value chain and the connectivity between tourism and aviation. We also tried to, we also, also extended that beyond aviation and included all four both transportation, all transportation modes. The idea of not looking at the connectivity because really without tourism, there's no transportation. Without transportation, there's no tourism. And then looking at the issue of mice, really, um, mice is very important for the tourism industry. If you look at the mice value chain of mice in its totality, you will see that it benefits not only the airline industry, but also the economy as a whole. The event will have held about two weeks ago, but had to be postponed because of COVID-19. Um, we are now looking at hosting events in the next two months. Now, the form of events really is what we are still considering. Of course, like uh, Gabbert mentioned, there are benefits of um, online, benefits of uh, virtual, and benefits of physical. Now, it depends on which perspective you are looking at it. To the organizers of events, they would prefer physical events. Because by physical events, they have more interactions, more presence. They are be able to actually relate with people directly, physically. Even the issue of events which includes networking also is one of the benefits that people do prefer physical um, events. Now, virtual events now is now becoming a reality because there are some issues that uh, virtual events will address, like issue of immigration, issue of security, uh, this will be more or less taken care of by the virtual events. But really nothing, nothing really will actually substitute or replace physical events because of the multiply effect of having physical events uh, in any location because of this, as I said earlier, multiple events of physical presence of people. But in reality, is the case. Now we have this community now that actually made traveling virtually impossible. <laughs> so therefore, people still need to communicate. People need to relate to one another. These virtual meetings and online meetings now provide one of the options available uh, for people to actually meet and discuss their issues. Of course, virtual meetings is not good for the airline industry. Uh, it's not good for most of the people here. Uh, there are tour operators, travel agents, for example, if there are virtual meetings, um, there is no ticket to sell, there's no airline to convene you. Um, all the attractions in the country, people are not going to do that, but still, people are still going to actually, we still have to communicate. So for me, really, um, the events bring together all stakeholders within the industry, within the tourism industry, and the transition modes, whereby they can look at the policy, they can cause issues, they can also look at issues that actually affect the industry and likely to actually bridge the gap between tourism and the general industry. Um, I was very pleased with the decision that Gebert made in terms of online and virtual um, events. Also, in terms of also uh, what you mentioned as to the future of large events. The event has uh, been on for the past two years. Last year, we had uh, going to about uh, 3,000 participants at the events, and they came from different sectors. The airline, the maritime industry, the aviation industry, for the road industry, uh, the hotel industry, they're all there. Uh, likely also from the government department, decision makers, they're all in attendance. But this year, we have to postpone it. But we are looking at having the same events uh, in the very near future, 
maybe a combination of both physical and virtual events so that those who are unable to travel can still take part and those who are able to travel also can still take part in events um that clearly is um, what i'm going to leave here a few minutes um but clearly it's going to be both it's going to be both physical and virtual thank you very much Can't hear you, All Captain. Right. Oh, yeah. Thank That's you very good. much. Yeah. Apologies. So, Didier, you had Chief Odusonwo mention that with virtual events and online events and looking at the future, probably tour operators might not be able to find tickets to sell and all those stuff. But I don't want you to come in on that. I want to bring in Madam Susan and come back to you, Didier. Madam Susan, That's what good. does the future? the future of mines in Africa, according to the poll and the results that we've seen, is looking more physical and virtual, both in the mines industry, we call that hybrid. I was actually attending a UNWTO webinar just last week that we were discussing about this matter and this subject. And they were saying that the hybrid mode is going to be the modu operandi, the new normal for mines in all sectors, not only in Africa. Madam Susan, looking at the fact that mice actually represent a very important sector, especially in the trade, travel tourism trade for tour operators and the travel agencies. What do you think is going to happen to our sales as tour operators, looking at the fact that the future of mice is going over the You have the floor, ma'am. Madam Susan? Your mic is unmuted already. Oh, I'm unmuting you now. Did you? Yes, Captain. You, Can you hear me? Do you do you want to weigh in on that subject while I sort out? Madam Susan. Okay, Madam Susan. Madam oh, Susan there she is. Right now. There okay. she is. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we can hear you. Okay, um, thank you very much. I think I actually voted that in Africa, mics would be more physical, actually. <laughs> um, mm. You know... I thought as much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if we 100% embrace uh, virtual, I mean, uh, thank you, Mr. Justin, for clarifying online and virtual. You are actually very right. I'd always known the difference. Online is what we are doing. Virtual, it's like you are there physically, but it's an avatar. You see, why I happen to know so much of this is because one of my hobbies, apart from traveling, is watching movies. Yeah. So I watch a lot of movies that, um, it's funny enough, what we are going through has been predicted by the movie industry. It's been predicted. There was a movie I watched about, uh, 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 about what exactly is happening, where the, the, the world was on lockdown. Nobody could move anywhere because of a virus that was out there affecting the entire world and turning people into zombies. And it was, the, it was the future of 2045, in which virtual, uh, uh, virtual took the order of the day. Avatars were the one that was reigning. And you see, even, I mean, uh, a, a husband and a wife are sleeping on the bed. The husband gets up and goes into, get his avatar to attend a meeting. All those mysteries, you know, what always ends most of those movies? That is why for me, Human beings are a creature of interaction. We are created to fellowship. We are, a we are a creation of fellowship and interaction. That is the way God created human beings. I mean, we can't be away from each other for a period of time, but eventually, eventually, we will find a way around it and come back together because the human beings are meant to have that handshake, to have that warm embrace, to have that peck on the cheek. That is how we're created. That is how we're formed. And guess what? 
in the movies that I watch, it doesn't always end up good. You know, this thing is computer. Somebody injects a virus somewhere and it messes up the whole system because it's all computer. And before you know it, it starts getting people's avatar to commit crime somewhere in the other part of the world. And before you know it, the military is at your doorstep arresting you that you have just committed a crime. And it was just somebody that hacked into your system and they use your avatar with your sign on and your ID to do all these things. You see, as much as it's a movie, but guess what? There's a lot of realistic um, things that happen in movies that eventually happen in real life. You all agree with me. I mean, we see uh, movies like James Bond. I'm sorry I have to go to this because of what we're talking about. Movies like James Bond, there are a lot of technologies that far back at that time we thought was not possible. Guess what? Some of those technology in James Bond movies is possible now. We are seeing it now. So that is my scare when it comes to virtual meeting. That is my scare. My scare is what happens because there will always be one villain. If you understand what I mean by a villain. Yeah. A, a villain in the movie is the bad guy. That yeah. always feels he wants to take over the whole world. Yeah? He wants to be the one to be in charge. He will just develop a program and it, and it affect all our system and messes up the whole thing. So for now, because of what is going on, yeah, virtual meeting, uh, getting your avatar and the online meeting, fantastic. But I'm a firm believer that I, I'm a creature of fellowship. I, I would still, anytime, any day, still prefer to sit down and talk to you, Mr. Jessnan, one-on-one and uh, negotiate deals. And you know that it's actually me, me speaking. And on the other hand, like you said, if we all embrace the virtual, yeah, somebody like myself, and I think the entire hospitality industry should just even close office and shut down. Because if nobody's traveling anywhere for meetings, uh, it's not just going to be the travel agencies not issuing tickets. It's going to be hotels. The everybody. hotels will all be shut down. Everybody. Because okay. nobody, not everybody in the comfort of their home can be any, it doesn't even need visa. Even the country as a whole is going to lose a lot of income. Do you know everybody. the income? Do you know the income embassies country make from visa fee? At least let me use Nigeria as an example. I mean, the UK uh, immigration in Nigeria makes a lot of money that the Nigerian uh, embassy of the United Kingdom is the one that funds the entire West Africa. They do not receive any funding from their home country. You see, all that is going to go down the drain because you can be in China as a snap of your finger. So there will be no need for visa fee. There will be no need to go, to go and apply for visa to anywhere. So it's, it's something we can embrace for now, for the meantime, but it can never be a permanent solution. We should not look at it Definitely. as a permanent solution. Rather, human beings will always find a way. If we have to put on a whole kit on our body to go and sit down and have that meeting, we will do it. Human beings always tend to find a way around those things. So that's my opinion. It's not just my industry. That is the scare. I mean, when you, I, 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 if I can remember the name of the movie, I'm going to put it on so that we can take time and watch it. It's actually very scary. The virtual world, what we are going through now has been predicted in the movie world. It has been predicted. So that's my concern and that's my contribution. It's a welcome development. It's beautiful. It should be one of the options. It shouldn't be the way go going forward. Can I say something? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I just on. <laughs> I want to weigh in on that. Go I, ahead. I, I just want to say something about uh, the, the the new generation. If you are working now at uh, a lot of trade fairs, you see a little bit the older generation. And when I work with my students, I see the students always communicate with, with the phone, and I'm used to communicate by phone or by talking, but. Uh, the students are, are, are communicating by WhatsApp, for example. And when I ask, what are you doing? And they say, I'm in a conversation right now. And from my feeling, it's not a conversation. 
they are communicating, but it's not like a conversation should be. So I think when we look at the future, we have to think also about the next generation and how they are communicating. And I think if we have the hybrid events in future uh, with a combination of live and also a possibility to visit it uh, virtual, I think a lot of the next generation will visit the, the trade fairs as well. And now we are missing the next generation. So that's what I wanted to say. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gerbert. Did you? Um, uh, sorry, sorry, please. Um, just to add to what Jason said, I'm actually supporting what he has just said now. I'm okay. supporting it. And uh, I want to support it with one example. You see, you are very correct. The children of nowadays, this generation, everything is all about um, being there. But guess what? In as much as they enjoy that, they still enjoy a, a fiscal presence. I'll give a funny example. Um, my teenage daughter um, was all over my case about having um, um, a day out with her friends. I think they were on holiday and then you wanted to have a day out that they planned a day out. And I'm like, okay, I want to find out how I'm going to squeeze your, your, your program into my busy itinerary. This was the, before the COVID-19. Somehow I was able to walk around something and I dropped her off with her friends. Apparently a group of five of them plan to meet and at the end of the day when she came back i asked her so did you enjoy your time out with your friend i said yes mommy i did so what did you guys do we were on our phones we watched tv i was like okay so if you're on your phones why did you have to go physically why did you have to go physically you could have as well been on your phone chatting with your friend sitting at home in your room and you didn't have to inconvenience me guess what she said guess what she said we said mommy I know we are always on our phone, but we still love to see each other's faces. <laughs> that's exactly what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's what she said. So she, I mean, so that physical contact, they still needed it, even though they were virtually chatting on the phone and playing games throughout the six hours they were together. And I was so curious. I mean, you shouldn't have uh, disrupt my program for this. You could have done that in the comfort of your home. And our response was, Yes, we know we are technology age, but we still love to see each other physically. So even for this generation, even for this generation that loves the, their, their gadgets and loves their equipment so much, they still want to once in a while see themselves. But Susan, is it, uh, think when you were a child and your, your parents, were they always happy with what you did? Uh, well, I'm not of this age, so in my time, <laughs> there, I mean, I was not a virtual child growing up, yeah? Our children are basically virtual children now. <laughs> I, was not a virtual, I was not a virtual child growing up, so I probably didn't have that problem with my parents because um, I was always there physically. In short, I was even very annoying because uh, I'm always in their business. There, there was no phone. There was not much of technology to take me away from Can their I presence. Yeah, okay, but there were maybe the, the music that you that you were listening was not the music that your parents uh, liked. I think. Oh yes, yes. I mean, we we well, we didn't have the luxury of that anyway. Like I said, <laughs> working in technology, so we had no choice. Whatever our parents wanted to listen to is what we all listen to, whether we like it or not. Except they are going out of the house, then we can tune in the radio. Then our radio, we used to tune it in. Uh, <laughs> Chief, Chief Abiodun, uh, do I have a weakness in the house? We have to go and tune <laughs> radio and tune in our television I to have our own time. Saying. Yeah? But once that your mommy is back, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we are back to doing it the way they are doing it. But I'm loving this. Don't get me wrong. I also love this generation. I love the improvement that has gone on. I, I love everything. I'm, I'm also very IT savvy. Very, very IT savvy, much more than you could you could imagine. But like I said, God created us as a creature of interaction and fellowship. Yes. So while we, are, while we are embracing the technology, uh, while we are embracing the technology, please let's not throw away, I mean, that fellowship that we so desire. And Mr. Gessner, I will find, I'll personally contact you. I'm actually very interested in that virtual trade trade. <laughs> Because we are working on something that that might be of beneficial to me for now. 
to that the only option we might have for now because of the COVID-19 is to take the option of the virtual uh, mice that you have talked about. So it's not a total write-off. It's actually very important. And we were discussing about it this morning and we're wondering how do we make it work? How do we make a virtual trade fair? A virtual trade fair work? A trade fair where people have to display goods and services. How do you make it work with on? It definitely would not work with online meeting. The only way it can work is with a virtual uh, platform, which is what you have talked about, which is about having your avatar and being actually there at the trade floor. So it's a very good thing. And I will definitely get in touch with you privately so that we can discuss more on how to drive that. Because I'm speaking with a group of people now that wants to put something like that together, but they don't know how to go about it. So that was why I joined this meeting late because I was in another meeting where we are, where we are discussing about that. So that was why I joined late. But thank God I joined at the time you were talking about uh, mice and trade fair being done virtually. <laughs> Okay, but let, let's be clear with one oh, thing. Oh, did, oh, did Mr. Javert, I'm coming back to you, okay? All right, let me bring in one more person to weigh in on this discussion because I'm actually loving this conversation that we're having, okay? But it might interest you to know that 129 people registered for this webinar, but we have 36 participants. It appears that the mice industry in itself, before we actually we started talking about virtual or online. The mice industry is not too popular with Africans. Meetings, incentive, come only if, if, if they, I think, my personal perspective, I'm a look, I think only a particular percentage of the travel and tourism industry participants, stakeholders, really understand what mice is. Did it? Can you tell me the reason why? Is that the reason why we have a little? drop in our participant list today. Do Africa needs to wake up to the reality of mice before we even start talking about virtual? Because somebody is even asking, what's the full meaning of mice? Did it? I want you to come in from that angle. Are you there? Yes, yes I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, great. Um, first I'd like to thank everyone and my fellow panelists. Thanks a lot. Uh, Dr. Janssen for your contribution, Chief uh, Abudum, and Madam Susan, thank you so much. Um, as usual, I learn a lot from each and every one. Um, yeah, and Captain, thanks to you too for keeping this going. Yeah, um, I would like to say that first of all, before COVID-19, we started, when I mean me, uh, we, um, referring more of the travel industry in Africa. We started focusing more towards the mice business. And there have been a very good number of mice events happening throughout the continent. Uh, Rwanda being the first one to attract more mice um, event um, that kept growing. So mice has its place, its place in this industry um, in many, many, many aspects and for many reasons that I might not have enough time to elaborate um, on everything. But we can just see that mice is part of the travel sector that contribute largely into different other subsector of travel, such as um, airline, like flights, when there is, for example, the African CEO conference that took place in Kigali that um, host about 1,800. But I have to say, compared to uh, what happens in the part of other part of the world, this is just a drop in the ocean. There are events of up to over 50,000 um, delegates happening out there. I mean, mice events. So um, we can see that this will keep the airline busy, it will keep the accommodation busy, it will keep the transport busy, it will keep the entertainment and restaurants and, and all that, and the venues as well. So mice is definitely important for Africa. But now, before talking of virtual, um, I don't think we will reach a point where everything will just happen uh, virtually. I will tell you why, because we didn't just go virtual with the COVID-19. You know, we've been, we started already having some, some meetings, some 
planning some sessions um, virtually, uh, though a few number of people could meet in the auditorium, but somebody else who had to intervene in the same um, meeting or conference, but who, who was unable to join were co co uh, uh, linked via Skype call or, or similar other technology to share their view, share their opinion. Um, and that was there, but it has never been seen as a way or method to replace the face-to-face, -face, uh, the body contact, the meeting type of mice that always happen. And even when we look at the post-COVID-19, um, let me share something with you. On the 8th of May, Forbes shared an article about European aviation. What did they say? The European aviation are saying that flying is safe without social distancing. And on this article, they say that is because of the air filters fitted on the aircraft that recycles and clean the air so people don't breathe the same. Now, when you look at the situation of the COVID-19, everything is moving slowly because of the uncertainty and everybody's waiting to see what's happening, where, with what and how, and then anybody else will follow suit. So why did I use this example of the aviation? Is that should this be confirmed and approved? An aircraft like an Airbus A330 that takes between 250 to 440 people, depending on the type, um, will become an example to follow. Then the, 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 the mice organizers will say, if we can have 350 sitting together on the air aircraft, then we can also have people seated together in the hall. If they talk of the filter, maybe the uh, auditorium and different halls will have to consider or the manufacturer of the aircon to improve it, to make it similar to the one of aircraft so that when they are switched on, it keeps cleaning and recycling the air, just like on the aircraft, so people don't to reduce the risk like it's been now said. So you can see that from there, one thing will attract another. We will. Pretty much, yeah. things might not go back exactly to where it was in the same way, but we will um, well, still look at way. how to get to where we were, not in terms of uh, the doing things the same way, but in terms of achieving the same objectives, how to, in fact, how to better, because even before, no industry was just, okay, we've reached the, the optimum, we here, and then we're not doing anything. There was constant effort of, of improved, of uh, um, how do we improve this sector? How do we do better? How can we achieve more? How do we see more results? How do we get more revenue? How do we expand more? How do we attract more? That kept happening. And, but in terms of business, okay, let's now have the business mind. Um, this is, it, it is for this reason that we see a lot of reps, representative, or in, especially in sales, traveling from countries or continents, going to meet and see their clients. And this has been proven that a face-to-face -face meeting has more, um, brings more, gives more chance of sealing the deal, uh, securing the business, rather than just an email that was sent or a phone call or, or, or a Skype call. And the, yeah, that is um, one of the things as well. So we still believe that the mice is very, very, and will always be important for the industry, for the travel industry, for tourism, and whether it's now, or post-COVID period, um, mice will still continue. We'll find ways of how to have mice. Unless, like I'm saying, unless if um, it has been proven behind any reasonable doubt that a certain number of people cannot come together within the same place at the same time, then 
many things could be adjusted just around that. But um, the very, very, very big challenges or the example to follow will definitely be with an airline with their aircraft because the industry will argue that if this aircraft can carry 400 people, then we can definitely have 400 people in the under one roof. And then we can do like they are doing. We can equip the the, the auditorium with the, the air filter similar to the one of the in the in the aircraft. They remember that the society or the global leader, all world is working on improving um, this the situation in regards to the COVID-19. Uh, yeah, I think uh, this is what I can share for now. Thank you, Dinge, for your contribution. It's very holistic, looking at the aspect of the perspective. I know your hotel, Swan International, receive a lot of my visitors. And um, yeah. definitely you and Madam Susan will not, I know, will not support the virtual stop. Madam Susan said categorically she voted for the physical. All right. But... Um, Looking at this particular subject, okay, we are seeing the fact that the future is going to be social distance. It's going to be about limiting the capacity of uh, airline seats and all those stuff. Now, I want to bring on Mr. Menon. I don't know if Mr. Menon is still with all in the house. I want him to give us the aviation perspective on this particular subject. If MICE decides to go virtual or online, or a hybrid, how is it going to affect airline sales? Because like Didier said, in Africa, we only have a fraction of the percentage of mice events. Europe is the biggest mice international uh, 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 arrivals in mice. 50,000 capacity, all field. ITB Berlin got canceled, you know, it was a major issue, you know. Expo 2020, Dubai Expo 2020, that's why I wanted to bring on Mr. Mary Kobao, who couldn't join us for today. So, Mr. Menon, if you are with us, how do, will this virtual reality that we are looking at in the future of Mars, how is it going to affect airline travel sales? And looking at the social distancing angle, I wanted to come in from the perspective of the airline expert. What's your take on this particular topic of discussion? Mr. Menon, you have the floor. Yes, Captain. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me to share my thoughts. Uh, two things. Social distancing. I think uh, there are lots of questions about whether this is feasible or not, having social distancing on an aircraft. So, uh, Mr. If you Menno, can, we, can we have your video? Uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. So that we can have some <laughs> online meetings there. <laughs> well, depending on where you are. <laughs> uh, where I am, and I'm not shaved as well. <laughs> All right. No problem. Yeah, yeah, I see you, you've grown within a week. Last week, you didn't have gray, gray beard. <laughs> yeah, gray beard. Yeah, I was saying social distancing for aircraft is not something which is going to be feasible. If you look at uh, the quarantine uh, law in, in, in aviation, uh, normally, if there is a contagious disease on board an aircraft, you have to um, you have to identify three rows in front and three rows behind the passenger who is contaminated. The, uh, if you apply the same principle to COVID, that mean it means like six rows of, air, of, of of passengers need to be brought, not only one middle seat. So for me, it doesn't make sense to to have social distancing on aircraft, and I don't see it happening. Um, in terms of so, uh, virtual meetings and airlines, um, it will have a major impact. If you look at Africa itself, two, three countries are big on mice. That's South Africa, that's Rwanda, and that's Mauritius as well. We're very big on mice. We have a big in mice industry here, major conference centers and everything. Uh, if we go virtual, if ever it happens and we go full virtual, uh, it will definitely impact on the business of airlines because the like the the um, the presenters uh, say uh, with with mice you have groups of like between 200 to 300 people traveling at one point in time they book in advance they pay in advance so this is this is business that airlines love and hotels love to have as well so not having this kind of business is going to be a real problem for, for airlines. Maybe. That's my that's my take. All right. Now let me bring on Chief Odusawo. Chief Odusawo, going forward, going forward, 
speaking particularly for Nigeria, okay, what do you think Nigerian mice organizers like yourself and like um, the organizer of uh, Kwaba, okay, who unfortunately couldn't be part of this webinar, I actually requested for him to be here, but for some other uh, official engagement, he declined. What do you think is the way forward now? Because mines in Nigeria, I think, is still usually domestic. We don't try to receive, like we heard what Mr. Menon said, that uh, only South Africa, Rwanda, and Mauritius is big on mines. How do we key in into that percentage, okay, of mines arrivals internationally and domestically going forward? Chief Abiyo, please give us your take on that. Thank, thank you very much. Um... I see a very, very big group. Uh, so really, we are just at the very beginning. If you look into the number of my, uh, my activities, events in Africa, it cannot compare to what uh, goes on internationally. So therefore, my industry in Africa is still growing. The future for event organizers is actually very brilliant, very, very great. I will try and bring that to what happened many, many years ago when the issue of ICT came to being. I remember uh, my brother was an office, he had secretaries, many, many secretaries. In fact, we used to have a tapping pool likely for secretaries. And when ICT came, we thought it's going to create massive unemployment for the secretaries. Uh, but really, the, the economy grew. The use of ICT actually grew it actually has really grown the, the world generally. It has not bring unemployment, but actually increase uh, economy uh, of the world generally. Same thing will happen here. What will happen now in our organizers events now, bringing more of physical activities because it is the interest of the industry to have more physical, uh, physical activities. With virtual, because with virtual, uh, we cannot bring in those who are unable to attend uh, for whatever reasons, but they can still be part of the program. But really, physical is the way to go for the industry. There are so many, as uh, Susie mentioned, so many interests will be at stake. If you look at the, the value chain of mice, it affects so many people as well industry. That, however, cannot stop the growth of virtual meetings as well. With virtual meetings, uh, virtual events, we are going to have a combined activity by the physical as well as virtual, so that those who cannot attend for whatever reasons, it could be visa issue because many people cannot attend many events because, sorry, we could get a visa. Now they can attend. Mm. Many people attend because they a program. Now they can attend. So the future mm. of Africa is to grow the mice industry, to grow the mice market, and mostly because we are just at the beginning of it, and also to actually expand the both virtual and physical market. That's the virtual for That's what is going to happen. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Chief, for the submission. Now, Jebus, how do we tie these all together? I want you to take into consideration before you give me your take on this. The fact that for travel agencies and tour operators, the networking, the networking part of physical meetings can never ever replicate what an avatar would do. Looking at the perspective that uh, Chief Odusongo brought in, looking at the fact that in Africa, we like to meet people. Madam Susan also reiterated the fact that physical meetings, okay, in the future, is still preferred. She actually voted for physical. So now you as an, a, a, a mice expert and um, with your presentation today, how do you think we should tie this up? Looking at the fact that physical and virtual events seems to be the reality. How can we make sure that we still get the hand shake, like Madam Souza said, and still have opportunity of closing deals? Madam Souza said she will at any time, any day, like to sit down with you face to face and have that negotiation and discuss that deal, not with an avatar. What do you think and how do you think we should be able to tie this up in Africa? Please go ahead. Okay. Yeah, First of all, I want to say that uh, I don't have a solution. I don't know. If you ask me a half a year ago uh, if virtual events have, uh, have a future, I would say mm, the chance is very low. 
<laughs> and if you are asking right now with the corona in, in my business, in my company, we have all the live events are skipped. And we have a lot of demands for virtual events. So we see a growing market, but that is because of Corona. Mm -hmm. And I think there are more scenarios possible in future. Uh, what we are see, seeing now is that everybody is afraid and the governments are afraid yeah. and they make, they make some solutions uh, which are not ideal. And I think uh, the time will show us what, what it will bring. But because of Corona, we, we have to know, we, we had to learn to work with the virtual and with the online events. And that let us also think about the possibilities. And when you ask me personally, but it's not, uh, it's not the solution, but when you ask me, I think it is a, uh, for the future, it, it will bring a combination. And I think uh, there will be virtual events and the technique will be become better and better. And if I look at the, the real uh, virtual with, with the glasses and uh, the, the virtual reality, I think that's, that's, that brings in the future more possibilities. But what uh, Susan said, it's also important we are like animals. We need each other and we need to smell each other and we need to look each other in the eyes and not in the camera. So I think both will stay and the future will show us if the next generation brings the virtual events more in the business or the future will show us that the next generation uh, wants also more live contact. So let's wait and let's see. But I think after Corona, the, 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 the people will not be afraid anymore and it will go deeper and deeper. So the live meetings will come back again. So that's, I think that's good news. And people want to go somewhere. People don't want to stay home. You see, everybody is frustrating when they are sitting at home and they can't go out. So people want to travel, people want to visit, people want to meet other cultures, and that's not possible at home. So that's my opinion. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gabbard. Now, I want to have uh, Madam Hedler to weigh in finally, looking at the fact that she has a Chamber of Commerce in Tanzania, Tanzanian Chamber of Commerce Highland. Looking at all the conversations so far, and looking at the future that is looking more hybrid in Africa. What is your chamber going to do going forward, especially as you penetrate the African market on mice? Madam Hemna, let's have your take on this. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, by the way, great speakers, previous speakers, I think covered it a lot. But um, in terms of our chamber, as you know, we are currently we are still working as usual because, again, virtual and online uh, meetings have become very popular. It's the case with ourselves as well. Like, as I said, we work with clients based in across Europe and in America and Africa. And we daily, like literally my schedule, my PA gives me, but I, I just look at my diary and it's just packed because that's what we do. But you know, like what Susan said there, like human nature, we like interaction. That's what, how we are, we're, we're meant to, to behave and live. Like you like to see the person. For example, if I give an example, Emmanuel, in the previous meeting, I was not on video, I was not on camera, and yep. you told me for the future meeting, make sure you appear on video, on camera. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so that's just an example, because you just want to know who's that person behind the for that voice. So I, exactly. Exactly, see, so it makes you, like, now you know me, now you see me, it gives you that <laughs> comfort, that, okay, that's Edna, that's how my Edna looks like. So it's just it's the same. When we, we, we work at the Chamber of Commerce, we work with a number of companies and businesses. Sometimes you can talk to the client on the phone, but you know you won't get the same result as meeting the person in, you know, face to face. It works a lot better. And um, you know, there is a saying, I don't know if it's the same in Nigeria, but in, in my country, where I'm from in Tanzania, we say seeing is believing, okay? Mm. Mm. Oh God, it's the same here in Nigeria. 
<laughs> you can you can you can even give example for whatever is happening now. For example, I'm married with my kids, but I know my 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 friends who are single, they do online dating and they're just saying it's a disaster, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it does not give them the same result because it's not the same as when you meet the person, like the when I met my husband, for example. You know, it, it just gives you that comfort and it faith and trust in the past. So it's the same when it comes to business. Now I'm going to cover this from in terms of mice on three points, okay? I'm going to touch on aviation and then I'll come to tourism and hospitality. On aviation point of view, moving forward, if mice is to succeed, other parties need to do their bit. For example, the aviation sector, the landscape needs to change. Yeah period. Yeah. There's no question Can about that. Back? Yeah. Because, yeah, moving forward, for example, for example, moving forward, you don't expect, for example, the reason why most, let's say, uh, African airlines go bust, they can do well up here, and then they, they go bankrupt and whatnot is because they just neglect, they, they just ignore the professionalism that can actually be very crucial in the longevity of the airlines. For example, uh, big airlines you see today, they have people who are experts in the field that advise them how to invest their money, how to do, how to, to cut costs. But that kind of service many companies ignore, many African airlines ignore. I was talking to actually uh, two guys I mentioned earlier on. They have been in the industry for many years. And they are saying now they've been visa than ever because many airlines now, given the free time they have, They've been contacting them asking for their service because they know they need professional expertise, someone to advise them how they can actually come out of this uh, in a good form, so to speak. So I think we really need to, 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 uh, to, to think of uh, seeking uh, expertise and professional advice when it comes to any problem because that's the way forward. Um, when it comes to the number of fleets, I know, for example, the, the must the number of fleets must be reduced. There's no way any airline can continue operating the way it's been operating. Because number one, not many people are going to travel. You know why? Because the fear of traveling, the fear of COVID-19. People need to feel safe. So I think in, in, instead of focusing more on how can we get up and running, I think airlines should focus on how can we instill the faith back to our customers. Customers need to feel safe. And the only way that they can feel safe is if they know the safety, their safety is actually being taken into consideration. They'll be looked after, okay? So that's when they can, you can actually make them see the need of them to travel to go on a holiday or on a business or whatnot. When you, we, we talk about their own life, for example, from a business point of view, many businesses, including myself, I have traveled so much across the globe with my job, okay? But now I've been at home uh, full time with seeing my husband and my kids, it's amazing. And guess what? I still believe, I still get the work done. So moving forward, I'm just as a CEO of the company and I have my boss who are my bosses, I'm just thinking if we can get things done now, the way we are, then maybe moving forward to make sure the mice industry and everyone in the tourism industry is not going to suffer, we can still continue doing that, but also virtual and online meetings should continue. Um, but again, you have to think um, when it comes to uh, people going on holidays as well, many people don't have the surplus to go on holidays. But you know, people have money. They just want to, they don't know what's going to happen in the next, in the near future. So in order for a company, for a hairline, for a hotel or anyone to make these people have the face to travel, again, safety. They need to make sure, they need to feel safety. Their safety is number one priority. To them, for them, for myself and everyone to bring the family on a holiday. We like to go on nice holidays with my family, which I'm sure many, many families are like that. But now this year we're like, you know what? We just go to the countryside and chill. Because I just don't feel safe, even if it's a seven star hotel. To me, it doesn't make any sense. Number one, I need to know what exactly, what measures have they taken in place? And then maybe they may be able to convince myself or even my husband who is even tougher so right. than to actually make me go on holiday. Thank you, Edna. So, Thank you, Edna. All right. yeah. I would like to cut you in there because okay. of our time. It's already 5 p.m. now and um, 
I know that a lot of uh, participants would like to you know, connect with other things, especially those of them that are actually on the Ramadan fasting. They'll be preparing to break their fast at this time because they're on Ramadan. Actually, I have a contribution from Mr. Menon. Mr. Menon dropped a very solid one in the chat room. He said that he believes mice, out of all the mice, you know, all the sectors in mice, only events we take off in the next 12 months, especially if we have an economic recession. And I agree with him because I was in a UNWTO webinar just on Monday, where there is a particular mice group based in Paris that already, they said they are already working on their calendar. They are ready to get back into business by September. Even if social distancing and all things are gonna probably they are going to be having a 500 participant instead of a 2,500 you know, participant. But they said they are ready to put all the measures. They have made arrangements for screening technology, for temperature screening, for, 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 for hand washing and the sanitizing and all that. They said they are ready that as soon as government removes travel restrictions and there is movement again, especially within Europe, they are ready to receive international visitors. So I think the mice sector might actually be the first to recover because people are going to still have to do their face-to-face -face thing. Europe, I was shocked. Honestly, did it. I was shocked when I had this particular mice uh, coordinator said they are getting ready already. They are just waiting for their country to do restrictions. But before I bring on Didier to you know help me lead the uh, uh, remarks by the panelists. I want us to run, wrap up this webinar for today. I want to quickly remind our participants about next week's webinar. So I want to share my screen with you now. And uh, next week, we are going to be having another edition. Don't forget that this whole month of May is packed at TBS. This webinar, we are not planning to stop it. Actually, we are planning to do more of it. And um, it's going to be wonderful to have every one of you again come next week Thursday when we are going to be having airports in the house. Because actually airports have a bigger role to play. If you ask me as an airport operation professional, I know that no matter what the airlines does, without collaboration with the airports, they won't be able to do a lot because passengers, we have to transit through the airport. So next week, we're going to be having a session and I'm bringing on board the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, Ghana Airport Company. I, 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 I want Didier to help me and get a hold of uh, Airport Company in South Africa. AXA. And um, it's yeah. the AXA, yes, to bring them on board. Yeah. And probably, um, uh, Madam Edna, maybe you can connect me with your Tanzanian guys at the airport there. I'm very, very sure that Menon is going to help me bring on board their major airport operator in Mauritius. We need to have a robust conversation looking at what airports are going to do. I saw an article online yesterday. No, I was checking Twitter and I saw for Missino Airport in Italy, they have made arrangements for temperature screening helmets. I don't have a picture. I wanted to share the picture with you. Every passenger that comes to the airport at the screening point, they put a helmet on you and check your temperature. And I, I raised the poll on my aviation group that I run, Young African Aviation and Tourism Professional. Will you be comfortable wearing a helmet at an airport, checking your temperature? So these are some of the issues that we're going to come and talk about. CETA has also rolled out a report saying that airport of tomorrow, we have to go robotics, okay? And we're going to have touchless, touchless facilitation biometric facilitation at airport. So I want to know, is our African airport, are they ready for the ICT mode of operation, the augmented reality and the virtual operations and the boat operations that is coming up? Because definitely the more, in, the, the less interaction, we are looking for interaction at our mind, but the less interaction people have at airports, the more safety we can achieve. So that's one of those things we're going to talk about on 20, 4th of May, next week Thursday actually, on African airports. And I'm also in talks with the airline, uh, Air Traffic Operators Association of Nigeria. Their president has already confirmed the participation next week. So come and look at how air traffic services will look like. And then the last one for the month of May, 
will be a very big one that I'm very sure power operators and travel agencies and DMOs and DMCs will be there. Didia, you know, we said we have to do everything possible to make sure we bring in the big guys for this particular world. The ambassadors, the 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 the, 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 the government, no, let them come and tell I us. I don't think uh, we need ambassadors. We need ministers of tourism or, ministers or of the, he, the, the head of tourism board. The head of tourism uh, boards. Of different countries. For example, yeah. like uh, the, the head of Tuga in Ghana. Uh, okay. um, well, we... We, I, I don't know how easy it is for you to get Mr. Lai. Is it Lai or something something like that? The Minister of Tourism, Art and Culture and Tourism in Nigeria. But uh, yeah. if not, but we already have uh, Madam Susan guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we can okay, have somebody have, have someone, from South African someone, Tourism. They, yeah, South African Tourism, very important. to so have South African Tourism on board. I know you're going to help me with that. I have someone with the Ministry of Art, Culture, and Tourism in Ghana who can connect me with uh, the GATO. You know, I think you're talking about GATO, the Ghana uh, Association of Tour Operators. So yes. that session is going to be powerful and wonderfully if we can have a representative from our Ministry of Tourism because I want the government to come and give us their perspective about visa policies. How are visa going to be like? Like Dr. Chief Oduson will say, many people in the past have not been able to attend my seniors because they were not able visas. So going forward, okay, what's visa policy going to be like for Africa? Are we going to go more stringent because of COVID-19 or we're going to maintain the open policy that can attract minds, attract stories, international stories, domestic stories, and it is very important for us to have this conversation on this session. And then I really, really want to appreciate every one of you. Don't forget we have in the coming a virtual reality masterclass, a virtual tourism masterclass. Mr. Jensen, I would love to talk to you after this meeting about a masterclass looking at virtual tourism. The training is coming up. We are working powerfully at TBS International. We want to roll out this training to top operators and travel agencies to help us prepare for the future that we are looking at as far as virtual tourism, virtual reality, virtual meetings is concerned. So Mr. Johnson, let's have another conversation after today's meeting. So um, thank you every one of you for being a part of today's webinar. I would love to invite you to join me next week where we talk about African airports. If we do everything, if we have all the discussions and we leave out the airports, then we need the airport, they are the connecting bridge between the worlds, okay? Airports are landlords for airlines. And somehow, somehow, they have been left out in the conversation about palliatives and about measures and restrictions, and airports are actually suffering. Airlines are getting financial palliatives. Some, somehow, somehow, airports are being left out. Although in Africa, most airports in Africa are government-owned. So we need to hear from them on how are they planning for the reality of post-COVID-19. And that seems at TBS International for the entire month. By the time we come back next week, we'll roll out to you our itinerary of webinar for the month of June. I told you we're going to be doing this for the entire COVID-19 period. And after COVID-19, DJ and the Madam Susan and myself, we have agreed that we're going to switch from COVID-19 recovery webinar to destination webinars because we're going to promote Africa. And I think we're going to start with Mauritius. We want to know more about Mauritius so that we prepare participants, we prepare tour operators, we let them know about the attractions, the accommodations, the transportation options, the activities, the amenities available at different destinations in Africa. So we're going to be switching from the recovery webinar to destination webinars at TBS International. So thank you everyone for joining us. Didi, I like you, you are, you are, you are, you are my co-moderator anyway, but you are a panelist today. So. Why don't you just um, take off this body from me at this point and help me receive the closing remarks from every member of the panel. And I wanted to start with Chief Odusan Wu, being the eldest member of the panel. Thank you, Didier. Over to you. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks, Captain. 
it's um, like I always say, this is really a great platform. And we always have each week great session because we have all the key players, not only from one sector, but diverse um, sectors within the travel and tourism industry and also scattered all over the place, so not just from one country, which is really, really great. And um, having said that, we'd like to express our appreciation and sincere appreciation and big thanks to um, all our panelists, starting with the Chief um, Abiodum. Thank you so much for um, joining us today. We understand that even though it's a period of lockdown, but uh, there are always things to do for you to dedicate all your time with us. We really appreciate and thanks for bringing, um, sharing your knowledge with us and um, be rest assured that uh, it has fallen on the fertile ground and we've learned a lot from you. Thank you and we hope to stay in touch with you again. And yes, uh, they, you're welcome. And um, just one thing I wanted actually to say, Captain, before you took the, the floor again, just after Edna finished talking, I will be one minute of, or even less on this. The airline, I'm not an airline expert, but the airline, because we work very close with airlines, actually say that it is much safer to be on the airline with the uh, 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 red, but the problem is actually the airports. So mm. in terms of, for the airlines, um, in terms of the COVID-19, they feel like they can fly. Um, I can share that um, Forbes articles um, that Aviation in Europe published. They feel that they are ready. They feel there's no risk on the onboard the flight, but the problem is airports. So exactly. the safety is there <laughs> uh, in terms of the aircraft, but the handling, they're all from the time you get to airport, trolley, check-in at the counter, immigration, all you know when we they tell us to undress and dress again <laughs> scan us <laughs> yeah all those <laughs> things all those things yes um how it can be like you say uh seamless where there's uh no chance of touching anything contactless, passing contactless. yes contactless so um that is where the main problem is <laughs> but the big bits are so ready and just waiting um having said that i would like also to thank you edna for joining us uh last last week we had a glimpse of you <laughs> but um, <laughs> <laughs> but today we have a full view of you. Uh, thank you so much. And then, uh, yeah, I know in East Africa we say Asante Sana. Yes, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then, um, oh, our own, uh, no, let me first go to Dr. Janssen. Okay. In South Africa, there's a lot of similar names, so we don't pronounce the J. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same, that side. It's it's mostly Jan when it's, um, it's spelled exactly that way. But uh, that's why maybe if it's Jansen, uh, excuse my, my pronunciation. Um, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. Uh, I know that I know what to do. I didn't say that I need to talk to you, but I know what to do to get to, to talk to you as well. To be in touch, <laughs> <laughs> I know what to do. Trust me, I know what to do to be in touch with you. And we really appreciate your time. We know that you're a busy man and you have a lot to do. We appreciate the time you've put in to be with us and share such great knowledge with us. And then we normally share after this, Captain will share uh, the document of your presentation so we can share with as many people as possible. We really appreciate and say once more, thank you. You're welcome. And then, uh, of course, let me welcome Oga Madam today and say thank you, Madam Susan. 
<laughs> me and you. Boss. I ju- I just came a little bit before you. I was also so in another East Africa uh, webinar still on tourism. Um, so I was about I think about fifteen minutes late, uh, and I I did apologize to that. So. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to have you, Madam Susan. We can't wait for this thing to finish. So, uh, you know, our cases are getting rust and dust. <laughs> we need to move. <laughs> yes. You know, we need to keep moving. And thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate uh, your presence as always. And then, uh, and, um, yeah, to, thank you for being there and making this possible. Um, we'll make sure the next sessions are really, we, we, we bring many, many more heavyweight as well um, from different, we try by all means to cover the continents, to have the South Africa or the Southern Africa, to have in Central Africa, to have in East Africa, to have in West and to have in the North, so that we know that the whole Africa is covered. Um, thank you so much for all your time. And for myself, let me introduce myself again. My name is Didier Bayeye. I'm the African tourism expert, but also marketing manager at Sun International Hotel and Resort for Africa and Indian Ocean. It was my pleasure and as as usual to be with you and to share a few things with you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Didier, for bailing me out there. And um, this is here we wrap it up today. I received a note of correction from Mr. Menelik Eric. Can I please say, can I please say hi, sorry, so sorry, just to welcome Air Austral, you know they've been so present on all the sessions from Reunion Island, but they they have been there, Joanna, you are in Mauritius though, I know, (laughs) but Air Austral is a Reunion Island uh, airline, Thank you so much, Giovanna, for being there. Uh, we really appreciate um, you joining us. You know, we really appreciate it. We, and, need, and, to yeah. bring, we need to bring that on board as a panelist yes. one of these days. Yes, definitely. Very, very Thank you. And of course, my friend, Mr. Ramasomi. <laughs> Thank you so <laughs> much, Menon, Mr. Menon. <laughs> he gave us the aviation perspective today. That was very cool. Oh, okay. I didn't even know. Well, I just read a lot. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Okay. It was before, really a pleasure uh, to have before, you. Uh, Captain, excuse me, before we all run out, uh, Mr. Gibbet uh, Jensen, um, I think I would like to invite everybody for a virtual dinner with, you know, with my avatar. <laughs> 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 we all have a, a dinner tonight. A candlelight <laughs> dinner with our avatar. That, that actually is going to be very interesting. Wow. I can't wait wow. to have that. So, Mr. Kibet, is it possible for, for, for both of us, first of all, I mean, that, that we will think whether we're going to invite Didier or not? Yeah? Mr. You have to connect Sounds through good. TBS. So Sounds you, very good. Of you, both of you, we have to connect through TBS. You can't leave me out of this dinner. That yeah. Yeah. For the very first time, internet will be and down so in the whole world at the same time. We can do like dinner with our avatar. And my, my avatar is the most beautiful it, one in the world. Internet will so. be down in the whole world at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Didier Giovanna is responding to you in the chat room. Pleasure, Didier, and hope to see you soon in Mauritius. Of course. And then Mrs. Aderon K. Olatuji, who is one of our participants at the ongoing TBS post COVID 19 recovery webinar for travel and tour business. He said, Thank you, Captain. This is usually a wonderful, this is actually a wonderful eye opening webinar on mice and the future of mice. We look forward to destination webinar. Yes, we're going to be bringing destination webinar on board. And let me quickly remind every participant, TBS International is currently running a travel and tourism post-COVID-19 business recovery course. We're looking at practical solutions that every one of us as travel and tour businesses should be doing 
right now? What should we be doing? Looking at the lockdown, looking at the future. If you want to enroll in that webinar, you can send an email to tourismbusinesssuccess at gmail.com. Some of you already indicated interest. The webinar, the training, the course, which is powered by Zoom, is still running for the entire month of May. And hopefully, I hope Mr. Johnson will not turn me down on this. I'll probably like to bring him on board in one of the training sessions to come and talk to us, maybe for a few minutes, about what he thinks we should be doing to help our businesses, especially as it relates to mice. So the TBS Travel and Tourism Post-COVID-19 Business Recovery Course is ongoing now. Send us an email to tourismbusinesssuccess at gmail.com if you want to be a part of it. And Kemi Shoet has said, great webinar. Thanks for making it happen. Yes, we're going to continue to do this for the entire May and some part of June. And then we're going to switch on to destination webinar. Mr. Meno, I need you to connect me very fast with the head, the president or the edge man of the Tour Operators Association in Mauritius. We need to come up very fast with the destination content on Mauritius. I'm going to be having that webinar probably late June or mid June next month. We're going to switch to destination webinar because COVID-19 is a new normal and we're going to stop talking about COVID-19 very soon. So Mr. Menon, get ready. We want participants to get to know about Mauritius even before we start coming. Once the restrictions are locked, are open, I'm going to be the first person you're going to see Mauritius and I'm going to bring Didi along. I'm very sure. <laughs> the last time that you guys actually hang out, but this time around, you can, you can bring, bring me in? because <laughs> you can bring me because you are in aviation. You know, by bringing, I understand you cover my ticket, my flight. But I will show you around. Baby. That's what I will do when we are there. Wow! <laughs> All I'll right, take you around and show you around. <laughs> All right. So, for the benefit yeah. of information, all the panelists immediately after this webinar. I'm going to form a WhatsApp group. We have Mr. Menon, I can see. Thanks for the thumbs up. So I'm going to form, put everyone together in a WhatsApp group. I'm informing you ahead now so that we can connect, we can talk more, we can take this discussion further. Yes, Mr. Johnson, I'll be adding everybody. Mother Hell now will be there. Madam Susan will be there. DJ will be there. I also bring the airline expert that we add the you know webinar with together. And mind you, DJ. Dr. Gabriel Olowo will be joining us next week on the African Airport webinar and also okay. the one for the African government. So we're going to be having, you know, he has committed to this webinar to share his knowledge with us. So we're going to be having him aboard. Okay, so I'm going to form a forum, okay, where we can actually have uh, virtual discussions going forward and connect with each other and uh, talk more looking at the future. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining me once again and for joining TBS International for this aviation tourism and hospitality post COVID-19 recovery webinar. Look forward, look forward to an aviation tourism and hospitality forum and expo. Immediately COVID-19 is over, okay? We're gonna have that probably, it's gonna be Mauritius anyway, that we're gonna go there and talk about the whole industry and the whole sector in a physical event, not virtual this time around. Post COVID. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Madam Susan, please, I will be expecting the invitation to that dinner in the WhatsApp group. I'm going to create. Oh, sure, sure. Mr. Gilbert, right? We are inviting <laughs> Captain Emmanuel, right? And I hope your avatar is very handsome. Because, <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. Awesome. And handsome. Thank you very much. Chief Odusawo. I didn't know you're going to still be with us by this time, looking at your busy schedule. Thank you very much for joining us today. We look forward to having you on the other editions that is coming up. And then we are looking forward to the edition of the National Tourism Transport Summit and Expo, which is typically going to happen this year if possible. We'll be on the lookout. Thank you, everyone. It's my pleasure having you. And I will be joyfully glad to have you on board next time, next week, and throughout the entire month of June when we start the destination webinars. Thank you very much, and I'll call it a close for today. Bye Thank for you. now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.